Hello again and welcome to Daily Meditations. It is such a joy to be back again with you now for like the third recording in a row with Cheryl. It's a pleasure to be here during Lent because the readings are so powerful during this season. I just want to begin by saying last Friday I gave you the wrong reading, but I hope you won't hold that against me. And today we'll actually do the right reading. And we'll begin, though, with a prayer, because if we say a prayer, it might keep us on track. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. O oh God, who have taught us to chasten our bodies for the healing of our souls, enable us, we pray, to abstain from all sins, and to strengthen our hearts to carry out your loving commands. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Well, Cheryl, what kind of a reading do we have today? Well, I'm going to be reading from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 6, verses 36 to 38. It's a short gospel, but it is very direct and it's very clear. And the Gemini are going to kind of unpack that for you. Jesus said to his disciples, Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. You will not be condemned. Oh, excuse me, back up. S stop judging, and you will not be judged. Stop condemning, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and gifts will be given to you. A good measure, packed together, shaken down, and overflowing, will be poured into your lap. For the measure with which you measure will in return be measured out to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to, to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Well, as wow. Cheryl said, it is short, it but is where short. would you like to um, start with what word, with what phrase, with what passage in that little reading? Well, you know, we've just finished up with the year of mercy, you know, just oh. a few months ago, and we, that was, seemed to be the topic of dis discussion for so much of that past year. But even though it's over, this doesn't mean we get to stop talking about the mercy that God wants to give to us, but it, it is, and in, in clearly says here that it's kind of dependent on what we're willing to do. Um, and so I, I still think that that mercy we can never talk enough of. No. And once we're into Luke's gospel, which we are today, we're going to be jumping in these days between uh, Luke and Matthew, Matthew mm -hmm. and Luke, Luke and Matthew, and then finally putting in a mark. Luke is all about mercy. It's just his main theme. Jesus comes across as a compassionate, loving Savior, and it's all about God's unconditional mercy some of the parables unique to Luke this reading here is the way he amends what Matthew had said earlier be ye perfect as your heavenly father is perfect Luke gives it a, a little edge be merciful as your father is merciful he like equates mm -hmm. perfection with mercy mm -hmm. so you're right Cheryl there's never in the Catholic Church a reason for saying enough with the mercy let's right. get on to health right. and brimstone mm -hmm. mercy is continually <laughs> present absolutely and 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 unfortunately in our own human condition you know we are less than perfect and we do have a tendency to judge other people to condemn them to make a judgment about them how messed up they are or you know they deserve what they get kind of a mentality but that's not the message here the message is, is if you want God's mercy, you're going to have to, to, to give it to others. It's almost like it's like a divine karma that's being preached mm -hmm. here, which might sound like, well, you're not a Buddhist, are you? No, I'm really not. But the idea that really and truly what one measures out, how one is generous, it will come back. And how one is cheap, how one is measuring things tightly mm -hmm. and not sharing 
it doesn't work to one's benefit to be like that. And in mercy especially, there is no way mm -hmm. that we who have been given so much mercy, if we want to receive it, it says, with the measure that you measure, it will be measured back to you. And I have seen that in my life, that by doing certain things, it is always in my better interest mm -hmm. to be more generous than less generous. It's not just with money. In fact, money might be the least of this. Mm -hmm. It's with our time. It's with our patience. It's with our forgiveness. Mm -hmm. It's with our being mm -hmm. to be generous. Right. The attitudes that we hold. And so I think that this, this gospel, again, calls us to have that self-examination, to really look inward and say, you know, how well am I doing? You know, do I have unforgiveness that I'm holding on to or grudges or resentments or unforgiveness? Somebody in my life has hurt me. Um, if I'm hanging on to that, it's just a poison in my own heart, but it's also going to prevent me from receiving the very graces that I want to receive from God so that I can grow. You know, not only closer to Christ in relationship, but grow in holiness and virtue. One thing about the measuring here, Cheryl, that I find interesting is Sometimes we think, but we've got so little, we have to be kind of like keeping track of it, like um, grace. I, it's so little, we've got to be, no, gra grace is like unlimited. Mm -hmm. So there is no way you will be outdone. Mm -hmm. There's no way that we don't have a stockpile of good things, and I don't just mean in our closets, mm -hmm. which we do, or in our pantries, which we do, and in our refrigerators. We have... So much, and in our garages, <laughs> you should see my garage, it, it, it's, it's way too much stuff. So this idea that the gospel is challenging me to is not to hoard up, but to give away. Because in the measure that you can let go of mm -hmm. is the way that it will flow back to you. Yeah, absolutely. So, well, I think it's a challenge for both of us that um, we need to look at those things. We need to look inward. And then say, Lord, show me those areas that need to be worked on so that I can receive grace. But then I can receive the grace that you give me and then give it away again. Give it to keep giving it because you say we can never outdo God. Um, he's always going to give us more than we can possibly do for others. He's going to give us so much more. Um, okay. So this is important for us to do that. And judging, I think that's important too. Oh, he says, yeah. do not judge. Stop judging and you will not be judged. And we, as I said earlier, um, we do have a tendency to judge others and to especially look at their actions or their behaviors um, and make a, pronunciation, a pronouncement on, on that as good or bad. Um, what's that about? I think it's innate in our, in our nature almost that we are prone to be very judgmental. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe it's the way we're brought up or maybe it's the way we, we see it working that we are very discriminating, we're very judging, very competitive. I, I think that's something that the gospel is challenging us to be mm -hmm. less able to put ourselves in a tribunal, to be not over people's actions, and to not condemn often because so many times if we knew the whole story, we would recuse ourselves, as mm -hmm. others have done recently, for being, I shouldn't be judging this I'm involved in this, so I recuse myself. We should be doing that all day long. Mm -hmm. But instead, I think we put ourselves into judgments where we don't even have a place. Sometimes appropriate, we do mm -hmm. need to be discriminating and make certain calls. Other mm -hmm. times, we're just stepping into it. Yeah, very good advice. So we're going to take that. I'm going to listen to Jim's advice. I uh. hope that you take Jim's advice too. We're all in this together. We're all growing and trying to, to grow in holiness, but also be more sincere in our witnessing of our faith. So have a blessed day, and we shall see you tomorrow. God bless you. God bless you tomorrow.